Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We finally completed the, the Let's Play series of Cyberpunk, so it's time to share some thoughts and review this game. Let's get into it, here we go. Cyberpunk 2077, the most anticipated game of 2020, hit us by a storm and disappointed some people, but still I think we're talking about a great game, a great game that does suffer from some problems that we will talk about soon. I know what you want to hear about, the bugs. Were there bugs? How many bugs? Bugs, bugs, bugs? I don't know, there were any bugs? Is there any bugs? Oh my god! What happened? <laughs> Wait, wait, what? Oh my god, what is happening? What the fuck? Another bug? Yeah, so we're talking about a really, really buggy game. There were a lot of bugs that the game suffered from, and we'll talk about that, but I want to talk about everything, the pros, the cons, and what really pissed me off, but step by step. So first of all, I want to talk about the things that I really liked that make this game very good for me. I really enjoyed this game, and I recorded uh, 80 hours on Steam uh, that I spent in Night City, and I don't play for 80 hours game that I do not like. So yeah, I definitely like this game. First thing that I liked is the story. There is a very interesting story in Cyberpunk 2077, something that will definitely uh, caught my eye right away and I was uh, really invested in V's story, the main uh, character, but more than that the side quest as well, very interesting side quest, very immersive and it's easy to get lost in the side quest and to get attached to many of the characters that you meet only in the side quest. Uh, yeah, but I think that if you want to play uh, cyberpunk to its full extent. Even though you don't have to do all the gigs and the little things, you you should play the side quest, complete the main story and complete all the side quests because they are very, very good side quests. Some of them could be a great story to tell as a main story in a game. I would not be surprised that would work as well. And let me give you an example. There was this side quest in which I participated in uh, boxing matches, like uh, street boxing fights and there was this guy that I fought and he was, you know, uh, putting money on his fights and all of a sudden his uh, wife came in and begs of him not to do it, they don't have enough money, don't uh, box for, for money and all that and his wife is pregnant and she's about to give birth and you kind of feel sorry for them so that was an interesting development because after I beat him then the game let me choose if to take his money, actually take his car because he did not have any money or let him keep his car or let him keep his car and also give him the money that you would that he would have got if he would have won and yeah and then his wife there and she's about to give birth and she's worried about the future of their child and i was just i could not not give him the money so i told him keep the car and i'll give you the money take care of your wife take care of, take care of your kid so i forgot about that after i did that and le way later in the game like i did many quests after that all of a sudden i get this message there's a uh, messaging system in this game and he sends me this guy same guy that i won and gave him the money and told him to keep the car he sent me a photo of his young little baby and he tell, tells me thank you for your help and the baby is fine and he's healthy. I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing. I just realized how much I cared for him and his baby and their future after I beat him. I did not know until the game did something like that and remind me of that. And that is something that makes an experience in open world games way more impressive and way more realistic and authentic. And that is something that CD Projekt Red do very well. We saw that in The Witcher, however, however I want to say something, I, the, Cyberpunk is not as good as Witcher 3 and that's okay, it's not supposed to be, let's judge this one on its own. I mean, I think this uh, comparison is just not supposed to be done at all because if you think, I'll give an example, like when Leonardo da Vinci created the Mona Lisa, you can uh, judge every painting after that in comparison to the Mona Lisa, it's just not fair because sometimes a great artist have this the right moment, the right time, the right muse, and all of a sudden one of the greatest creations come to life. You can't expect that it will happen every time. So I'm not, uh, I'm not comparing Cyberpunk to Witcher 3, it's just not fair. 
I'm judging it on its own, but I do know that City Project Red know how to create side quests that feel authentic and full and complete, and it happened in Cyberpunk as well, and it was a really great experience. If I take out all the side quests from this game, it, it's far less impressive. Like, it really, really dramatically changes your experience. So, big recommendation, play the side quest. Again, you don't have to do all the gigs and spend 100 hours if you don't want to, if you're not that kind of a gamer, but do the side quest. And besides that, the combat is pretty much fun. I liked it a lot. I think the action, it was packed with good action and good graphics. If you have an INPC and you can uh, pump up these ray tracing settings, then even more, but you don't have to use ray tracing, even without ray tracing, this is a good looking game. If you don't have an old generation console, then you will enjoy it. Besides that, the soundtrack, I think it worked perfectly, and I think every time I drove in a, in a car that I bought and put on the radio, I enjoy the music, sometimes I did not want to fast travel because I wanted to enjoy the music driving in Night City. Uh, yeah, so I liked a lot of things in this game and I think this game as a whole, it is a great game. However, let's talk about some of the problems and why it is uh, a game that is not even close to being perfect at all. First of all, the bugs. Yes, they are there and they are everywhere. Every 30 minutes I encounter a minor bug. In terms of uh, major bugs, maybe because I played it on PC, I don't know. I've encountered only one full crash, which made me to reload the game entirely, but that happened to me in 80 hours only once. But in terms of minor bugs, it's it's too much, way too much. I mean, the more big and impressive an open, an open world is, and Cyberpunk is an impressive and big, huge on scale open world, it, I guess it's easier to encounter bugs and all that, but this was way above what is acceptable, and I think that it's because they released the game too soon. It, it was just not fully cooked, and you know that, I mean, it's been talked about so much. I think it is forgivable, but but it definitely lowered the final score, all right? So it's forgivable because it will be fixed, but City Project Red definitely needed to wait with the release. I think they made a major uh, mistake by uh, giving an optimistic deadline. They should have released the game like a, a half a year or even a year from now. I hope that they learn that lesson, I mean, it's really important. And yeah, that's why we suffered for so many bugs, because the game is technically is not ready, it feels sometimes, when, when I think about all those bugs and, and all those glitches, some of them are uh, at least very, very funny, so I had a good time laughing while recording my Let's Plays, if you saw them. Uh, yeah, but there are many bugs, and that's a major con, but it's still forgivable. But what is not forgivable from my perspective is the fact that CD Projekt Red was not honest in terms of how the game works in all gen consoles. If you have the basic PS4 and not the PS4 Pro, or if you have uh, the Xbox One and not the Xbox One X, then this game is in a terrible shape from what I understand. I did not play it on all gen consoles, but I uh, read the reviews and saw some clips on YouTube and oh boy, this is really, really bad. Now, while bugs in such a big game, even though it was way more than uh, usually acceptable, those bugs, they are still forgivable, but the fact that CD Projekt Red was not honest about uh, all-gen consoles, that is something that is... This is a red line. I think you cannot not be honest with your, uh, with your clients, with your gamers. This is just the worst thing you can do, I think. I'm optimistic that it won't happen again. It seems like they are taking responsibility and I know that they was willing to refund gamers and they publish a formal apology and all that. So I'm optimistic that this is a mistake that they won't do again. Now while it's not something that influenced uh, the gameplay for the way I experienced it on PC, but this is when you judge a game or when you review a game, you review the entire experience of the product that you get, not only gameplay or story, you judge the entire, the entire experience uh, for you as a customer. Uh, yeah, so if I'm taking everything into consideration, I would give this game an 8 out of 10. Still, an 8 out of 10 is a game that I would definitely recommend. I think you should play it uh, and I think you will enjoy it. I do think that once DLCs will come out and the bugs will be fixed, it is a game that I would like to do a second run on. I think it was enjoyable enough. Uh, yeah, so that's what I thought. What do you think, Johnny? Do you agree? He's a bit shy today.
Uh, anyway, you can let me know if you agree, disagree with what I said, whatever it is, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching.